Good morning all. This thing is driving me mad. This thing, the PIR sensor. Because um, I didn't have it on this low wall facing the house. Initially, I had it on the front of the house facing the road. And the cars must be 40, 50 feet away. And yet every single car was triggering this sensor. Basically, it's just far too sensitive. Um, but even in this position here, this sensor is far too sensitive and the light's just coming on all the time. So I need to decrease the sensitivity of this sensor. The only trouble is, it doesn't have a sensitivity pot. Now, at the moment, this uh, PIR sensor and the little light are running from a 12 volt lead acid battery. In fact, you can see it's disconnected at the moment because uh, it wouldn't take long to flatten that with this thing on all the time. Um, that's another story. I'm kind of intrigued by the possibility of a remote battery but connected back to the main battery bank uh, through fairly thin wires. I want to investigate that. But the first priority is to get the sensitivity of this thing down. And as I say, there's no potentiometer in there for sensitivity. There are two other pots, one for the amount of time the relay comes on and one for the light level at which the thing starts working, which is, seems pretty pointless to me, but no pot for sensitivity, so it's gonna have to be done manually. Let's bring it indoors. Right, first things first, let's uh, dry this off a bit, and I can also take off my protective rain cover, my piece of insulation tape. So is any of this mist on the inside, or is it all on the outside? I think it's all on the outside. I don't think any water's got in there. Right, let's slide the PIR detector off and unscrew these two screws. And there was a family of uh, wood lice living in here, which was quite disgusting. So I uh, had to evict them. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if some of them have actually decided to move inside the PIR sensor. Let's find out. Uh, no, there don't seem to be any animals in here and thinking about it. Well, they eat wood, don't they? So they probably prefer to live out on the woody bit, not in the plasticky bit. Right, let's get down to the electronics. There's an awful lot of hot glue inside here because I wanted to seal the entry point for this wire particularly. Not sure that that was quite so essential, especially as I've got my drain holes here. Um, so I'm not sure how much movement I'm going to have on this PCB but hopefully there'll be enough to get underneath it yeah right here are the two potentiometers they're marked time and sun and quite annoyingly time um, is at its shortest when it's most clockwise that's just annoying why couldn't they've made the effort to get that the right way around so the longer the time, the more clockwise you turn it. But anyway, um, this one's sun. I'm not quite sure what the positioning of that one is. Probably back to front as well. Wouldn't surprise me. But as I say, no pot for sensitivity of the PIR uh, sensor, this thing here, through the chip and ultimately to the relay. So let's take a look at the squirk it. Um, it's based on this CS9803 PIR controller. And we're interested in this uh, bottom one, really. They're very similar, but this one is the relay uh, version. Um, now, the, con the um, detector, the PIR, is here. It goes into this input here, and there is mention of in negative one, in positive one, out one, in positive two, in negative two, out two. And what this is, is a couple of op amps. And I was thinking, okay, what you've got then here is an input resistor to this second stage, op amp 2, 10k, and a feedback resistor, 560k, so you've got a gain of 56 there. Um, there's a big capacitor across there as well, so this looks to me like a low-pass filter, so I think it um, amplifies those slow movements which you get on a PIR, and it's going to completely damp any high-frequency oscillation. You want to do that, you don't want noise getting through this thing. So could I reduce that resistor there and get less gain in that second stage? And I'm thinking 
maybe go to half as much. So put another similar value resistor across that one and reduce it to about half the gain. And then I was looking at this stage here. Now they've got a, um, well, it looks like a feedback resistor, but it's across output and input positive one. Well, that wouldn't be negative feedback. And I was thinking, well, that's a bit strange. And the longer I stared at this, the more it didn't make any sense, really. You've got the PIR going into uh, in negative pin two, and then a feedback resistor going from out uh, of op amp one, this is all op amp one, back to in positive pin three. And it just looked to me like these should be the other way around. And funnily enough, they are, if we look at the pin listing, because we've got um, positive input first stage op amp. So in positive pin two, in negative pin three. Well, this is in negative pin two, in positive pin three. So the data sheet seems to have a disagreement in the pin numberings and descriptions and the actual application uh, note. So what's going on there? So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assume that this, um, the markings on this diagram are wrong and that this is actually in negative with a negative feedback resistor and this is in positive. Um, so that these are both the effectively gain setting resistors. And if I reduce the value of both of these, and I'm thinking of halving it in the first stage and halving it also in the second stage, I'll get a quarter of the gain. And that's kind of what I feel I need. It's so sensitive. I'd like to damp it right down. So you have to actually walk right past this thing to trigger it. So I think what I'm gonna do is find a couple of 470K resistors Put one across that resistor. Well, maybe not because the resistors on this uh, circuit are very tiny. Let's have a look. So I think one of the resistors is here, the 560K. The other one I think is up there, the 470K. And be very difficult to solder through hole resistors across those. And I don't have any surface amount of that value. So I think uh, what I'm gonna do is solder directly onto the pins of the chip, maybe on the underside of the board. So let's put a 470k resistor um, across pins one and three, and also another 470k across pins uh, 16 and 14. And in fact, those are symmetrically opposite each other, so it'd be nice and easy. Let's find a couple of resistors. Right, my set of uh, very ancient resistors, might as well use these. Oh dear, four seven, nothing. But I've got some 390ks. It's gonna take the gain down a little bit more, but yeah, let's give that a go. I'll solder a couple of 390Ks on there. And uh, if your sensor doesn't use that chip, but uses the BIS 001 instead, well, it's a similar situation here because you've got positive in, negative in, uh, output. So you've got op amps again here. We've got um, on the high numbered pins, we've got uh, two stages of op amps here. So it probably works very similar way on this chip to the chip that I'm looking at. Right, let's start by uh, pre-tinning the tips of these resistors. They're quite old, so they are going to take solder with difficulty. Right, let's, uh, oh, that's rather a lot of solder. And I've got no water on my sponge, never mind. Let's do pins one and three. I think I've got a bit of a solder drag there. Yeah, I need some water on my sponge. Right, let's put the first resistor on here. It's got to be flat enough to the board. Oh, come on. Brilliant. So that it fits under the board. Turn it around a little bit, I think. I must be approaching this all from the wrong angle because it just feels very uncomfortable, bit of solder blob there. Uh, okay, I need to tin up the other resistor, which is there. Right, there are my two resistors between pins one and three and 16 and 14. Let's flip it over, put this roughly back into position. And now I have to test it. Uh, so I have to desensitize the CDS. I might be able to do that with that pot, but I might also have to close the blinds, see if it works. Right, well, it still seems pretty sensitive. I only have to move my hand a little bit. 
and that triggers it. It's about 20 seconds for the light to turn off, so it is a bit of a wait. Well, it does seem to be still extremely sensitive, even with its cover on. I can stand over the other side of the room and it detects me. I really wanted it to de de detect me no more than sort of a meter or so away. So I'm just taking another look at this circuit and I'm just wondering um, if I put a resistor across that 47K, which is directly across the output of the PIR, whether I could desensitize it a bit further by say putting another 47K across there, perhaps I'll do that as well. Right, so I've desensitized it further by putting a 33K, I uh, thought let's go for a lower value, directly across the sensor. I've got these two 390Ks across the two op-amp stages. Let's see if that reduces the gain. Right, so standing a couple of meters away on the other side of the room, let's wait for that to time out and see if I can trigger it just by moving. It'll take, ah, there it goes, okay, so let's move side to side. It's still pretty sensitive, but it must be less sensitive than it was. So I'm going to go with that and uh, just see what the outcome is. Now, I can't see any other ways to desensitize uh, this circuit other than perhaps raising the value of these two uh, resistors. But that's more difficult because then I'd have to remove the surface mount resistors off the board, which is why I went for lowering the value of these two feedback resistors. I've now lowered the value of that resistor across, directly across the output of the PIR. And uh, there it is. Of course, it's not going to trigger now because it's still light, but uh, yeah, the sun's going down. So soon I will know whether that has worked and I'll keep you updated. And now it's absolutely perfect because if I open the door, it doesn't go off, still doesn't go off. But if I get a little bit nearer, it lights up. So job done. Perfect. Cheerio.